What happened in the Christian Church after Christ ascended into heaven? Part 2. Continuing the story from where we left off last week, in 325 AD, Emperor Constantine summoned the First Council of Nicaea, the First Council of Christian Bishops and that council produced the Nicene Creed. At this meeting, most of the official definitions for Christian orthodoxy proposed by Emperor Constantine were upheld by most of the Christian community. Not long afterwards, under the reign of Emperor Theodosius, 379-395 AD, all forms of paganism were completely banished in the empire and replaced by Catholicism, that prototype Christianity. Therefore, Imperial Roman Empire completely institutionalized that form of Christianity and made it the only accepted form of worship in the empire. And that is how the universal, or Catholic, Church of Rome emerged in Rome. From the time of Emperor Diocletian, the Roman Empire experienced series of divisions until the empire was finally divided into two, the Western Empire and the Eastern Empire. Romans in the Western Empire spoke Latin while those in the Eastern Empire spoke Greek. The Western Roman Empire practiced traditional Roman culture and Catholicism. So, the Bible, the Holy Scripture of the Jews, the Old Testament, as well as the Epistles of the Apostles was translated into Latin. On the other hand, the Eastern Roman Empire was dominated by the Eastern Orthodox religion and had a more diverse culture that was influenced by different people. By 476 AD, the Western Roman Empire was in shreds. It divided into ten major parts which were 1. The Alemanni, present-day Germany, 2. The Franks, present-day France, 3. The Burgundians, present-day Switzerland, 4. The Suevi, present-day Portugal, 5. The Visigoths, present-day Spain, 6. The Anglo-Saxons, present-day Britain, 7. The Lombards, present-day Italy, 8. The Heruli, exterminated in 493 AD, 9. The Vandals, exterminated in 534 AD, and 10. The Ostrogoths, exterminated in 538 AD. Western Rome disintegrated and these ten kingdoms came up and existed between AD 476 to 493. But last three parts, the Ostrogoths, the Heruli, and the Vandals, did not support Catholicism fully, so, they were looked upon as enemies of Catholicism. Therefore, Emperor Zeno, the then emperor, arranged a treaty with the Ostrogoths in 487 AD and that led to the eradication of the Heruli in 493 AD. Emperor Justinian also destroyed the Vandals in 534 AD, and also crippled the power of the Ostrogoths in 538 AD thereby eliminating all the three powers that had opposed the power and influence of Catholicism. So, the Ostrogoths, the Heruli, and the Vandals did not continue to exist to get present-day names. They were eliminated. In 538 AD, the Bishop of Rome exerted considerable influence as the head of both the secular and religious affairs. By so doing, Catholicism united with secular matters a union of Catholicism and state was formed. This union is the papacy, headed by popes. The papacy ruled the world from 538 AD to the year 1798, a period of 1260 years. By 1000 AD Catholicism was the only known religion in Christendom and the single most powerful religious influence in the then known world. Papal armies were ever ready to deal mercilessly with heresy, or counter-opinion to Catholicism, wherever it arose. By means of secular authority the Church forced the followers of Jesus to choose either to accept the doctrines and pagan ceremonies of Catholicism or suffer imprisonment and perhaps death by the sword or by burning at the stake. Here are some of the customs, dogmas and ceremonies which were added to Christian practices and beliefs as a result of Catholicism. In the year 325 AD, the institution of Easter to commemorate the death of Jesus Christ. In the year 364 AD, the institution of Sunday as the Lord's Day to replace Saturday, the Jewish Sabbath. In the year 375 AD, the worship of angels and dead saints and the use of images. In the year 394 AD, the introduction of the Mass. In the year 431 AD, the exaltation of Mary, Mother of God. 
In the year 500 AD, the introduction of clerical garb, or costume. In the year 538 AD, Emperor Justinian defeats the three Aryan Goth kingdoms. He gives the Bishop of Rome political power. In the year 590 AD, the title of Pope, Supreme, Holy, Father, was conferred. In the year 593 AD, the doctrine purgatory introduced. In the year 600 AD, the use of Latin as official language of the Church during Mass worldwide. In the year 800 AD, offering prayers to Virgin Mary. In the year 850 AD, the use of holy water. In the year 890 AD, the worship of Saint Joseph. In the year 995 AD, the canonization of dead saints. 1090 AD, the rosary was adopted. 1097 AD, celibacy of the priesthood was declared. 1190 AD, the sale of indulgences, or pardon. 1229 AD, the Bible was forbidden to laymen, or common people. 1232 AD, the Roman Inquisition was established by Pope Gregory IX and the Emperor Frederick II. 1414 AD, the cup was restricted to only the priest in the communion service. 1534 AD, the Jesuit order was established. 1545 AD, tradition was declared equal to the Bible. 1546 AD, the apocryphal books added to the Catholic Bible. Catholicism set up a priesthood on earth to obscure the priesthood of Christ in heaven. In the Catholicism priesthood, people could go to the human priest to make confessions and buy indulgences, or pardons, for their sins. People were allowed to buy forgiveness from the priests even before they committed intended sins. People were directed to the Pope, images, priests, and fathers for salvation instead of Christ. People accepted solemnized pagan traditions, rituals, idols, saints, creeds, and canticles in the church instead of the holy commandments of Jehovah. The mediation work of Christ, the high priest of the new covenant, in the heavenly sanctuary, was cast down and trampled underfoot by the papacy. The Pope of Rome was declared the representative of the Son of God, Vicarious Fili Dei, on earth. But according to Jesus the only person which the Father would send in his name to represent him on earth is the Holy Spirit, John chapter 14 verse 26, not any man, not any priest. Any man who claims to represent Jesus on earth would definitely be the Antichrist. Despite the compromise and apostasy that crept into the church, there were always a faithful remnant who continued to hold on the faith of Jesus and also kept the commandments of God. But those who dared to oppose Catholicism were either imprisoned, put to death by the sword, or burn at the stake. This period, known in history as the Dark Ages, was characterized by the Catholic Inquisition to combat heresy. The period spanned from the 5th century to the 15th century. Amid the darkness that settled upon the earth during the long period of papal supremacy, the light of truth could not be wholly extinguished. In every age there were witnesses for God. These were men who cherished faith in Christ as the only mediator between God and man, who held the Bible as the only rule of life, and who hallowed the true Sabbath of God. These people were branded as heretics. Their motives impugned, their characters maligned, their writings suppressed, misrepresented or mutilated. Yet they stood firm, and from age to age they maintained their faith in its purity, as a sacred heritage for the generations to come. In lands beyond the jurisdiction of Rome, there existed for many centuries bodies of Christians who remained almost wholly free from papal corruption. These Christians believed in the perpetuity of the law of God. Nonetheless, among those who resisted the falsehood and corruption of the papal power, the Waldenses stood foremost. In the very land where Popery had fixed her seat, there its falsehood and corruption were most steadfastly resisted. The Waldenses were among the first peoples in Europe to obtain a translation of the Holy Scriptures. The Waldenses were severely persecuted and oppressed of opposing Catholicism. Behind the lofty bulwarks of the mountains the Waldenses found a hiding place and refuge. But here, in the hiding place of the Waldenses, 
the light of truth was kept burning amid the darkness of the Middle Ages. Here, for a thousand years, witnesses for the truth maintained the ancient faith. Papal armies were ever ready to deal mercilessly with heresy, or counter-opinion to Catholicism, wherever it arose. Notwithstanding the gloomy environment, some non-conforming voices were heard which made Catholicism very uncomfortable. Among such voices was that of John Wycliffe. John Wycliffe was a prominent English theologian, philosopher, and reformer who lived in the 14th century. He is often referred to as the morning star of the Reformation because of his early advocacy for church reform. Wycliffe translated the Bible into English, making it accessible to a wider audience. Hitherto, all available Bibles were in Latin. Wycliffe's teachings and ideas also contributed to the Lollard movement, a precursor to the Protestant Reformation in England in the 16th century. However, Wycliffe's faced opposition from the Catholic Church and his ideas were considered heretical. Despite the opposition he faced during his lifetime, his influence persisted long after his death by his followers, known as Lollards, who continued to spread his ideas despite persecution. God had appointed John Wycliffe his work. He had put the word of truth in his mouth, and he set a guard about him that this word might come to the people. His life was protected, and his labors were prolonged, until a foundation was laid for the great work of the Reformation. John Huss was one of the members of the Church of the Reformation who read and believed the writings of John Wycliffe. When he became a priest he exposed unscriptural teachings of the Catholic Church, and his preaching aroused the interest of the hundreds of students from all parts of Bohemia and Germany. Huss was burned at the stake, as eventually was Jerome, his companion and supporter. Countless number of people were killed by the Catholic Church during the Catholic Inquisition. History records that about 15 million people were brutally tortured and killed during the Catholic Inquisition in the 12th century. To this effect, in March of year 2000, the then Pope, Pope John Paul II, on behalf of the Catholic Church, gave a papal apology to all people in the world for the sins they committed. For centuries, people were burned at the stake, stretched to death or otherwise tortured for failing to be Roman Catholic. We humbly ask forgiveness, said Pope John Paul II, repenting for the errors of his church. The greatest impetus to the Protestant Reformation came from the courage and faith of Martin Luther, a German monk and theologian. At the age of 21, Luther was already an accomplished scholar. He read the Latin Bible, the first Bible he had ever seen. Dramatically, he came to the realization, the just shall live by faith. Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 4, Romans chapter 1 verse 17, Galatians chapter 3 verse 11, and Hebrews chapter 10 verse 38. Luther rose up with a holy zeal and challenged the Catholic Church's authority. He emphasized the doctrine of salvation by faith alone, sola fide, and the authority of scripture alone, sola scriptura, rejecting certain Catholic teachings and practices such as purgatory, the veneration of saints, and the authority of the Pope. Luther is best known for his 95 Theses, which he famously nailed to the door of the Castle Church in Wittenberg, Germany, on October 31, 1517. In these theses, Luther challenged various practices of the Catholic Church, particularly the sale of indulgences, or payments for the remission of sins, and called for reform. These were later printed and sent all over Europe. When asked by the Catholic Church to retract these statements, Luther answered, I cannot and I will not retract, for it is unsafe for a Christian to speak against his conscience. Here I stand, I can do no other, may God help me. Amen. The Protestant Reformation expanded rapidly in Germany due to the translation of the Bible into German by Martin Luther. Other brave men, in the likes of Philip Melanchthon, a German, John Calvin, a French theologian, Holdrich Zwingli, a Swiss theologian, and John Knox, a Scottish theologian, added their voices to the preaching and spreading of the Reformation, and this shook the foundation of apostasy in the Catholic Church. It began as a series of protests against perceived corruption, worldliness, and abuses within the Catholic Church. 
This led to the establishment of Protestantism as a distinct branch of Christianity. Luther's ideas spread rapidly, aided by the printing press, leading to widespread debate and the formation of Lutheran churches. His actions sparked a widespread movement that eventually led to the formation of various Protestant denominations. The formation of the Lutheran Church opened the floodgate for several other churches that dissented with Catholicism. Due to the Reformation, the Anglican Church, also known as the Church of England, the Presbyterian Church, the Baptist Church, the Methodist Church, and many others emerged out of the Catholic Church. Though all of those churches disagreed with the Catholic Church on some doctrines and stopped practicing those doctrinal beliefs, most of them continued to worship on Sunday, an institution by the Catholic. And this is the reason why the Catholic Church keep on telling the Protestant churches, Protestants accept Sunday rather than Saturday as the day for public worship after the Catholic Church made the change. But the Protestant mind does not seem to realize that in observing Sunday, they are accepting the authority of the spokesman for the Church, the Pope, our Sunday visitor, February 5, 1950. In the nutshell, the Christian Reformation was a pivotal movement in European history during the 16th century that profoundly reshaped the religious, political, and cultural landscape of Western Europe. Political leaders at that time were eager to assert their independence from the authority of the Catholic Church. So, the Reformation quickly spread throughout Europe, leading to the establishment of various Protestant denominations out of Catholicism. The Reformation fundamentally altered the religious landscape of Europe, leading to the fragmentation of Christianity into various denominations. The Reformation also played a crucial role in shaping the modern world, influencing concepts of democracy, freedom of conscience, and the separation of church and state. However, in response to the Reformation, the Catholic Church initiated her own reform efforts known as the Counter-Reformation. The Council of Trent, 1545-1563 AD, clarified Catholic doctrine, addressed abuses, and initiated reforms within the Catholic Church. This Counter-Reformation also saw the establishment of new religious orders, such as the Jesuits, to combat Protestantism and spread Catholicism globally. The story of what happened in the Christian Church after Christ ascended into heaven has not ended yet. I will come your way again with the last part of the story. Until then, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you, and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you, and give you peace. Amen.